new 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 um, yes, you can see how tiny it is. It's 240 by 135 pixels. I love it. It's very high density. It's IPS. Um, it's being revised because the screen got discontinued. Um, so we have a new version. We also did a silk screen update. And so on the back, so here's what got updated. Um, first up, um, the screen's the same size. It's the same orientation, same commands and everything, except instead of the screen being soldered in, it now plugs into um, the little socket there in the middle of the board. Um, but to make a space for that cutout, we had to shrink the micro SD card. So it used to be a push push type and now it's a push pull type. So basically to remove the SD card, just yank it out. You don't push it back in and have it pop out. Um, other than that, it's this the breakout board is the same size, pinout, mounting holes, everything. Uh, just new silk screen and slightly updated component layout. Okay, a bunch of Unexpected Maker stuff came in. Yes, Unexpected Maker made UFL versions of all their boards and we love all their boards, so we're stacking them. It's the S3, uh, Teeny S3 with uh, UFL, the Pro S3 with UFL, yeah. I guess the MQT, we got all photos. Uh, we've got the Feather S3, and then this is the on the back sorry the press and the other one was oh i don't remember yeah. feather s3 and then that was the teeny s3 so yeah, yeah. okay then, oh right there's one more yeah, there's one more and this is pico. like the teeny pico i think yeah yes teeny pico this, UFL. This. so all these now have ufl um nice. so they do not come with an antenna you will have to get another antenna we do in the store stock both ufl wi-fi antennas and ufl to rp sma adapters they're linked from each product you will want to, if you're connecting a Wi-Fi antenna, use an RPSMA UFL adapter. You need the RPSMA type, not the plain SMA type, or uh, the antenna won't make contact because the polarity is different. Wi-Fi antennas are different than every other antenna for reasons. Um, so uh, if you want to put these in a box or you just need more antenna gain, um, you want to have it be like weatherproof, you want to have the board be far away, all sorts of reasons um check out these ufl versions or they're basically the same price but they just don't have an onboard antenna all right next up keys last week i think we put in the neo key which is not to be confused with delicious gnocchi um breakout boards these are ultra slim um yeah key caps. you can see how slim they are oh my goodness so slim so this week um, we're putting in keycaps. Um, the clear keycaps, unfortunately, were discontinued. So we got the white keycaps instead. They're a new product. Um, they're kind of that pale computer white. They are not translucent. They are opaque. However, JP noticed that you can scratch them to kind of scrape away the top coating, which is um, opaque, and you can get a shine through design. So. Just FYI, you know, chalk switches don't have as many keycap options um, compared to MX. People really like the low profile, but there's a lot of trade-offs. There's not as much flexibility in uh, keycap availability, but these at least are white. They're like a milky white color. You can paint them, you can scratch them, you can uh, decal them very easily. So uh, a good option. We also have black. Next up. Next up, we have a UV NeoPixel strip. So this is addressable LED, so each LED can be turned on and off, except it has UV LEDs, not RGB LEDs. And so you've got there some fluorescent um, yeah. dust. We have like this fluorescent uh, paste dust stuff. So these, uh, you can see the chips. Those are WS2811 chips, and each one is wired up to a UV LED. So the thing is that it's UV, but like the chip and the libraries don't know that. So you you know what you would just do is say, if you want the LED to be on, you just set R, G, and V to like 25, 20, 255, 255, 255, and that'll turn the LED on full brightness. There's three like individual UV LEDs for the R, G, and V channel. But there's people who want to do like UV LED stuff and they want to like light it up very easily and control whether it's on or off or they want to dim it. Um, this definitely is just going to make it really easy to do so because you can just use any standard NeoPixel setup for it. We also have a 32 meters, sorry, 32 LEDs per meters. This is the 60. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's got double LEDs. Stop. Okay. 
Next up, uh, just a very simple breakout board. I needed a breakout board for this connector because I've started to use it. It's a TRRS connector, so it's tip ring ring sleeve. Uh, if you go back to the headphones, on this one. The headphones. Um, so you can see on the headphone jack, it has four contacts. There's the tip, which is left, the first ring, which is right, the third ring, which is going to be microphone, usually on headsets, and the fourth ring, which is uh, ground. That's for like headsets, but you know, I actually think that these audio jacks can be used for whatever you want to have low cost cabling um, to connect for data lines, say I squared C, or maybe your power ground, RX, TX, whatever, over a headphone cable. You can use a TRS jack for that. And these photo cables are really, really cheap and they come in like every length. So, you know, could you use it for that? Maybe, I don't know. Or you could just use it for connecting to audio. Um, this breakout board has um, this connector, sorry, the jack has, in addition to the sleeve, right and left has two switches. The R switch and the left switch. The R switch is when the jack is not inserted, goes to the right and the left switch is connected to the left. When you insert the jack, the R switch and left switch pins float. And this is basically, you know, on old stereo systems where you plugged in the headphone jack, it would automatically turn off the speaker. That's because the audio would no longer be routed through the switches. You could also use it to detect when a jack is plugged in by having a very light pull up and you can detect whether it's like grounded or not. There's tutorials that we've linked to, or you can just Google for jack detection um, to determine how to do that, but basically came free with the connector. So sure, we added on to the breakout. Okay, the story of the show tonight, besides you, Lady our team, our customers, our community is... This little gamepad QT, otherwise known as the QT gamepad code. Mm -hmm. This is uh, something I just really wanted because we were always making little projects or robots where I was like, oh man, I just need like kind of gamepad controller. And I don't want to wire up all the pins. I just want to be plug and play and ready to go. So this is a STEM QT board that has a two axis joystick uh, thumbstick and it's kind of reminiscent of the Vita if you've ever used the PS Vita a, a portable game system it's got two little middle buttons and it's got four larger buttons and uh, on there is a little AT tiny chip that converts the buttons and the two analog inputs into I squared C data so you can read it over I squared C which means you can use it with chips that don't have analog digital converters or you don't want to wire up you know, the 20 pins necessary, the 10 pins necessary to get all these IOs. Um, it's designed to be used with a STEM QT cable. So I can show that overhead, which I think turned off. Ooh, uh-oh. Yeah. Uh oh Oh, wait, there you go. Um, while it's booting. Let's we'll see what happens while it's booting. Let's see if it, no signal. No signal. Well, it'll come back in a second. Yeah, it's loading. STEM cam. Yeah. Loading. Um, it's useful for, especially, you know, projects where I'm using like a Raspberry Pi and I want a little gamepad, but I don't want to use USB for some reason. Whoa, it's just, um, it's not working. It's not working, huh? That's cool. Okay, now no, it's sparkling. sparkling. It's sparkling. Okay. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Anyways. Um, you've got code in Arduino and, okay, now it's working. Kind of. Maybe. No, it's working. We're back. Yay, we're back. Okay. Um, so it's got a STEM IQT port, so you can plug it into, we have boards that have, you know, STEM IQT on them, um, but also you'll have boards that go from this connector to, uh, jumper headers. Um, it's tiny. It's small. It's like, you know, one inch by two inches or so. Um, but, and it comes with the joystick solder on. So we do the soldering for you. So you've got this like analog thumbstick, two select start buttons, and then X, Y, A, B. So, you know, it's kind of in the standard gamepad um, setup. Uh, there's a power LED and an IRQ pin and LED. You can set it up to have the IRQ pin pulse whenever you um, get button presses, if you don't want to spam the I squared C port. And there's two address selects. So if you want to connect up to four of these, on one I squared C port, uh, you're good to go. Only thing I didn't do on this is because we didn't have space. There's only one STEM IQT connection. So if you want to chain it, we have little I squared C hubs that you can use to um, to connect multiple one of these cables to one I squared C port. 
And uh, as I mentioned, we've got Arduino code and CircuitPython code. So easy to use with uh, any Blinka microcontroller or computer. Okay, and that is our new products of the week this week, Lady Ada.